Hello and welcome back to Universe Sandbox 2. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit more classic but still as exciting as ever. Once again, I'm still a little sick so if I sound kind of off, that's why. But let's just go and do this. Because I'm not going to drag this on like five years like I did in my old videos. I did a bit of looking over my old videos and I realized that I, I kind of dragged things out a lot longer than I needed to. So we're going to try to uh, fix that. Just get straight into what we're doing. So today what we're going to be doing is actually simulating a small black hole going into the solar system and see how it affects Earth. Now by small I mean not 10,000 million suns, that's quite a few. What we're going to do is go into Jupiter and we're going to set it to 50 Jupiters. This is about as small as I'm going to put it. Uh, <clears throat> I think any smaller than this we won't actually see any effect. But let's see how this affects the solar system. And let's start. So this is going to be enough to give it a little tug on the sun. Maybe a little more than a little. Um, but here we go into the solar system. The black hole is gaining speed. And we will just name it something uh, classic. Let's name it Le Destroya. Yes, we've got to do something slightly French. I don't know why, but it just seems like... Oh, so yeah, even... <laughs> Okay, there's, there's the sick part I'm talking about. Even though it's a small black hole, we are definitely pulling in the sun at a pretty fast speed. Now, this is why I didn't want to go much bigger. <laughs> Look at the effect. It's really pulling the sun. So, as we can see, it's pulling everything, and it's actually affecting things like Jupiter and Saturn a lot more than Earth as they are a lot closer to the sun at their apoapsis and a lot further away at their periapsis, which is causing Jupiter to fluctuate from, oh, only a few degrees. It's already so far away that it's not really a problem for Jupiter. Let's see about Earth. So Earth is seeing large fluctuations in temperature right now. Uh, we are <laughs> ranging from 13.8 degrees to 16-ish. And we can actually see, if I slow down time, the effect of that on the climate. When we get closer to the sun, all of the ice caps go away. And we're about to hit the closest point right here. And now we're going further away from the sun again. And we're going to see the ice come back. We're going to see places like Spain completely covered probably. Oh, maybe not. Shoot, no, actually no, that's probably just the default season thing kicking in. Okay, uh, uh, pardon me, I was incorrect there, it was not going the way I thought it was. Darn climate. So let's continue, Le Destroyer is starting to get very close and it is speeding up fairly uh, quickly, we're going at about... 270 meters per second okay not that fast but fast enough that we can actually see the uh, it moving at least in years per second okay so things are starting to get a little bit uh, hectic in here we see things like Uranus is getting a very odd orbit now it's completely ovular now um, the inner planets are freaking out because I'm time warping so fast. Let's see how Earth is doing once again. We're getting ranges from uh, 14 to 15. It's actually not that bad. It's calmed down. I have a feeling I should have started Lady Destroyer a bit closer, but it's fine. We can wait a tiny bit. Um, we're going to start seeing it affecting outer things, like right here, 2005 QU-182, this asteroid, is actually being bent out of orbit by Lay Destroyer, and now it's going out into the middle of nowhere. Same with this, uh, <clears throat> actually all the outer asteroids are being pulled in by it. So that's pretty much the end of that. Now, let's see if it's enough to... Yes, Neptune is now being affected by its sphere of influence. How to 
ton, but enough to notice Saturn is getting Yeah, Saturn's much closer to the uh, to the Sun than it's supposed to be because of this So the destroyer is now messing with a ton of things and now it's going head-on towards the Sun we don't have much time until this is over. Will Saturn be pulled all the way into its orbit? Will it get close enough? No, not quite enough, but it is enough to stretch out Saturn's orbit, making it... Oh, it looks like Saturn's going to go straight towards the sun now. And now the inner planets are getting affected. Earth is being pulled out. Uh, not enough to make a huge difference in temperature, but... It definitely is having an effect. And any second now, they are going to collide. Here goes nothing. Le Destroyer versus Sun. Okay, so we have had collision. Is anything going to happen? No, the sun absorbed the mass. It actually wasn't enough to throw off the sun. However, Saturn's orbit has been completely derailed. Poor Saturn. The outer asteroids have been flung, but that wasn't enough to actually make a big difference. So what we're going to do is we're going to go with something... Let's quadruple the size of that. Um, Let's go boom, open solar system and we will start out a bit closer this time uh, we'll start out about the distance of Sedna <laughs> so if we go here boop grab this let's name it something different lay boomer because it's going to go boom when it hits the Sun that may or may not be a reference to X bomber Now it's the mass of 200 Jupiter starting closer, and let's see the effects. If the game will actually speed up. This is definitely not 50 years per second. I think the game is having a slight uh, lag, a slight lag. My grammar is correct. Okay, to fix this, we can just remove some outer objects that aren't that important. I mean, I, oh, I almost accidentally deleted Pluto there, but Pluto did come out strong on top, still existing. Um, there we go. This should work fine now. Yep, there we go. Not that fast, though. I don't know why it's having trouble. It's not like Le Boomer is much different from the last uh, black hole, but it's moving fast enough that this won't take forever. That's a slight lie. It's not moving very quickly at all. Let's just give it some artificial speed. There we go. So now we will actually see what it'll do. It looks like it's getting close to Neptune. I can't slow down. Shoot. Okay, it may be going a bit fast, but let's see what happens. Jupiter's orbit is being pulled a small amount. The sun is definitely getting tugged. Earth, normal temperatures, and let's see what happens when it collides with the sun. This is it. Here we go, and three, two, one and oh it does not hit the sun it goes slightly off center knocking the sun into a different direction but the planets are not following along earth is heating up pretty quickly because of this hit it went much closer to the sun than normal hitting 22 degrees celsius but now it's going to be much further away than normal the temperature is dropping 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 we have ooh, we're gonna hit probably 10 degrees for an average nine oh the Sun is just leaving earth behind um looks like earth is just going to be flung out into the middle of nowhere 
and it's going to freeze. Look at that. Earth. Everything is, yep, everything is now frozen on land. Um, and as things get a bit colder, the salt water of the sea will begin to freeze as well. Soon. Just, just, just wait. Any second now. We can see the ice growing. We can actually expand this a bit more. Speed things up a slight amount more. And there we go. We have been flung into an ice age. I like how there's still city lights. Like, there's a slight chance some cities survived this. You know, just total ice. Um, so it looks like Earth is now doomed. It didn't get doomed to complete fiery death, but it's now a giant ball of ice. And let's pop Earth out of its misery with a moon. Ready for impact and... Boom! And Earth has definitely been heated back up, but I don't think it's going to look the same when it comes out. And... Whoa! It's still in the negative temperatures. I really thought that would have warmed it up enough. It looks like we're going to have to go slightly bigger. Um, It's fine. I know what will do this. Let's just have Mars. Are you kidding me? Mars, you had one job. Darn it, Mars. There we go. That's got to warm it up. Any oceans? No? None? I destroyed half the world, so, like, if we don't get any water, this was com There we go. Now half the world is happy. I mean, until they all die from, like, the world melting. But it's, it's all okay. There we go. Everything is fixed. Darn dog. Just just come in if you want to, Charm. It's fine. And let's test with our last uh, size for the black hole, which we'll just do one sun. That seems pretty standard. And if we just... Oh, wait. Why am I just putting down the sun? Come on, guys. It needs to be a black hole. Because that's much cooler. Okay, so black hole is down. Now we just go to basic mass. Oh, one sun. I guess the M just stands for one mass of sun. I thought it stood for one million before, but looks like I was wrong. Okay, let's speed things up and see the effect. Okay, it seems like time warping is actually slightly working this time, but not much. That's fine, we're just going to do this again. Get rid of all the extra stuff. Just go for the inner solar system. Try not to delete the black hole itself. And now let's start it back up. Man, this is going slow. And my computer doesn't actually suck, so... It's very interesting that this is dying. I wonder if they did any tweaks to the physics. I know I used to be able to do things like this without it completely dying. <laughs> Actually, we can check what we have for settings. Come on, extreme simulation settings. That shouldn't have even been on auto. Um, max attracting bodies. Uh, let's just turn that down. That's probably what's messing with us when it comes to the black hole. So if we set that to 64... Never mind. That didn't do anything. 
It's fine though, it's already here pretty much. So, here goes our black hole. We've just flung Uranus right out of the solar system. <laughs> and, um, here goes Saturn. Will Saturn have the same fate? Oh my. Even my parents aren't very mature. <laughs> there goes Saturn also being flung. It looks like all three of the big ones are again flung. Look at that. Jupiter is also... Oh, will it hit? Oh, very close. Jupiter got flung very quickly. Let's pause, get a bit closer, and see exactly what is going on here. If we go to Earth... The temperature is eh, normal, pretty normal. And I think, oh, Earth, Earth is getting flung. No, Earth. Oh shoot, same with Venus. Mars has been flung the other direction. Okay, by Earth, it's fine. Everything's going to be okay. Ooh, what just happened? It looks like the sun actually survived the impact uh, while getting slightly ripped apart. Um, and then the black hole stole a bit of mass. The sun lost a lot of mass. Jeez, lost half of its mass. Oh, and it goes right by Venus. That's, oh, I didn't mean to click on that. That has got to have heated that up. Um, if we can actually get there. Yeah, Venus is now at uh, 660 degrees. It's slightly glowing. Swinging by the Earth, the sun actually manages to heat the Earth up a little bit more before leaving. And it looks like Earth is off to icy doom once again. So let's finish off this episode with one more, and we will just go all out this time. Let's go with a giant black hole, and um, let's just plop it right there. Okay, let's redo that, and let's do that paused and turn down the time warp. Uh, let's put it here. So, 10 million suns. This has a lot of mass, enough mass that... Even when we're going almost real time, we can see everything get pulled in quickly. Earth has been accelerated to... Ah, the temperature is actually pretty normal because it's moving at the same relative distance to the sun. Um, but it's moving fast. If you've ever played Kerbal Space Program, if you go this fast, you're being flung very far. We're actually going... A, wow, a tenth of light speed, and we're accelerating. Every five minutes, we're accelerating a thousandth of light speed. This gives us a lot of, uh, well, not only energy, but when we hit that black hole, there's going to be... That's actually interesting, because, you know, black holes, what happens when you hit them? No one will ever really know. Well, I'm not going to say ever. No one will know for a very long time. Is Earth going to be ripped apart a second before it hits? That occasionally happens. Yep, Earth is having material ripped off from the strong gravitational forces, and it has been absorbed. Here goes Mercury and Venus. And the Sun. The Sun is being ripped completely apart before hitting. And it looks like the entire solar system is just going to collapse in on itself. We And there goes everything. So guys, thank you for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy this episode and want more. Probably going to be live streaming tomorrow. I mean, not tomorrow. Today. Later today. And on top of that, I've been working on a little project that I may show off soon. So make sure to stay tuned and I will see you next time.